بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ما شاء الله ما شاء الله this is a class I've been wanting to teach for a long time and this is one of those slow dose classes it's going to take a while because ما شاء الله we're going to cover the hikam of Imam Ibn Ata'Allah Iskandari رحمه الله تعالى the hikam are like 332 advices on faith, on life, and really their whole purpose, as I heard from one of my teachers, is to explain the statement of the Prophet وسلم, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there's la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there is no creation and no power except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hawl, there's no change, nothing happens, nothing occurs. And there's no power in the things that occur. Illa billah. Except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So 332 advices that are helping us live and understand the statement which the Prophet called Kanz min kunuz al jannah. From the treasures of Jannah is the statement La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now the narration the Prophet said, This is the most beloved thing to me in this world. In, in kind of taking it in a more focused way, this text is going to cause us to think about our emotional and psychological relationships with faith. And it's going to ask us some really, really powerful questions that compel us to become extremely introspective. Not to the point that we become self-centered, but hopefully to the point that we become responsible. So the real goal of this book is to enhance our ihsan, to worship Allah as though we see Him, even though we don't see Him, we know He sees us. And each one of these wisdoms has like two sides to it, for the saint, for the sinner, right? For the righteous person, and then for people like myself, we got issues, trying to do our best, trying to improve every day. My job is to explain this in two ways. Number one is for those of you that have never encountered something like this before, you're really going to enjoy it. It's going to challenge you a little. For those of you who may have studied it before, to explain it in perhaps a more uh, aggressively academic way, just so that you can like see some things that you may not have noticed before. The explanation of the hikam that I'm using is from Sheikh Abdul Majid Sharnubi Al Maliki. Al Azhari, Al Khilwati. For those of you who are taking the 40 hadith with me, then you know him, died in 1929, was this really, really profound writer, uh, an editor of classical texts, and left this like massive body of literacy. So let's jump into it, inshallah ta'ala. Have you ever noticed, like, sometimes I noticed in my life when I'm really successful religiously, I sometimes take my foot off the gas? You know what I mean? Then there's been times in my life where I've sinned and slipped, and I also like take my foot off the gas. Imam Ibn Atta'ala Skandari is going to start the hikam by dedicating about the first 15 to things that can cause us not to have as possible a pure connection to God. Some of these things are much more dangerous and subtle because they appear good. Like it's easy to recognize like haram stuff and stay away from it. But if my good deceives me, I'm in trouble. So the Sheikh is going to dedicate the first 15 wisdoms, the hikam, the plural of hikmah, wisdom, to understanding how we need to frame certain things and prioritize them so that they do not interfere and corrupt our reliance on Allah. And the first thing he's going to start with is our amal, our deeds. Because deeds can trick us, right? We might not have true intentions behind our deeds. We might be contradicting our hearts with our deeds. We may allow our deeds to cause us to be delusioned. We may allow our deeds to destroy us. 
So he says something really, really, really profound. He says, Min alamat i'timad ala al-amal nuqsan raja inda wajud al-zalal. I'm going to read it again. Min alamat i'timad ala al-amal nuqsan raja inda wajud al-zalal. Which means from the signs that someone has trusted in their deeds. I'timad means like totally, like just totally relied on their deeds. It's like tawakkul. I'timad ala al-amal. And the reason this is kind of dope, he's playing around in the language, because it's like you're trying to rest on these deeds, but your deeds are not what's going to carry you necessarily. So it's like you've rested on something that eventually may crumble if you've placed them in the wrong way and if you're not doing them for the right reasons. In other words, if Allah hasn't blessed your deeds, you're going to fall while you try to rely on them. It's like dope. So he says, من علامات اعتماد From the signs that you have improperly trusted your deeds, نقصان الرجاء is a loss of hope. نقصان means like deficiency. So a loss of hope in the wajud zalal When the test or the slip occurs. It's like so dope, man. It's very profound. So from the signs that you and I have incorrectly relied on our deeds is that when the test shows up, we slip. Let's see what Sheikh Sharnubi Al-Maliki has to say about this hikam. Because if you think about it, remember the theme of the first 15 hikam is to keep everything away from you and your relationship with Allah. So if I'm doing something to show off, my deeds are taking me away from God. If I'm sinning with my deeds, they're taking me away from my relationship, my trust in Allah. So this is what he's getting at. Sheikh Sharnubi, he says, يعني أن من علامات تعويل العامل على عملي From the sign that someone has trusted in their deeds, أن يقص رجاؤه في رحمة الله عند وجود الزلل Sheikh gives one component of the meaning, and that is that when that person experiences a slip, they lose hope in the mercy of Allah. وَمَفْهُومُهُ And here's where the Sheikh takes it to a whole another level, man. He says, because what's mentioned in front of you is that this is, you know, the sign that you trust in your deeds is when a test appears, you lose hope. But what's understood is that a person prefers hope, right? When things are going well, they're hopeful. So when things are going great, they claim to have hope in God. But when they start to go through it and they start to face difficulties, they lose hope in God. He said, that's the mafhum of it. And this hikmah, this wisdom, he said, is really going to be appropriate for those people who have ma'rif of Allah. Because they realize it ain't about the actions, man. The actions are not what we should be relying on. We should rely on the Lord of the actions. In the 96th verse of Surah Al-Safat, Allah says after A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem, Wallahu khalaqakum wa ma ta'amaloon. Allah created your actions. Nothing happens in existence. I'm not blinking my eyes. I'm not breathing. I'm not moving my hands. I'm not teaching you. Except this was created by God. This book and Islam in general demands a relationship with Tawheed that compels us to a sense of responsibility that is very powerful and transformative. And some of these things you're going to be like, I didn't know it was this deep, yo. Like, I didn't know it was this distilled. I didn't know that this was what it, was, what it is. 
And perhaps you're saying, but like, what about the evil I do? Everything is from God. How do you understand that? Take my class on theology, and inshallah, it'll be cleared up for you, as well as in this text. But he's saying, don't allow your actions to come between you and hope. And we can add, don't allow your actions to come between you and fear and responsibility. So he said, the righteous people are those who do not, they do not amplify, their, their, their hope is not amplified like just because they do good, that doesn't cause them to get like overly delusioned by their goodness, right? So they have hope in their good, not in the one that caused them to do good. That hope should have already been there, man. That hope in a healthy way should have already been there. <laughs> so they don't see like, you know, I'm my own guide, like I guided myself. But they attribute their success to God. Look at the Prophet ﷺ after 23 years of da'wah and he sees people embrace Islam. Right? Magnify your Lord, praise your Lord, and seek the forgiveness of your Lord. So what he's saying is don't get caught up in your good because your good didn't come from you. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَى You didn't throw it, O Muhammad. When you threw it, Allah threw it. The power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed that to happen. So he's saying don't forget that the good that you've done قُلْ إِنَّ الْهُدَى هُدَى اللَّهِ It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, those people who know this are those who are fascinated and constantly in a state of rida with al-aqdar. Bil-aqdar. They are in a state of happiness. Whatever Allah has given them, whatever Allah has given them, they attribute that to Allah. Rida means to choose. So they always choose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that happiness, that contentment. And he said, what that means is that they understand mutamassikuna bihabli qada'i, that whatever happens in their life, whether good or bad, they know it's from Allah. If it's good, you stick to it, you ride it out. If it's bad, that's a test, avoid it. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qasas, verse 68, وَرَبُّكَ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ وَيَخْتَارُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates what He wants and chooses what He wants. So this has taken us now to a hyper understanding of our actions and how we should posit them in our lives and that our actions should serve as an awareness of Allah. As I said earlier, the goal of the hikam is to create a heightened sense of to worship Allah as though you see Him, even though you can't see Him you know He sees you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first lesson is for people who are doing good. Yo, don't get it twisted. Don't, don't think, ana hadaytu nafsi. You know, like I, I guided myself. Ahdi nafsi, la'a, Allahu ladhi yahdik. So the outcome of that should be thankfulness, humility, appreciation. You know what I mean? Uh, holding on to the blessing because it's all from Allah. It ain't from us. The second lesson is for the sinner, because perhaps the sinner will, in the other direction, allow their sin to defeat them. I made mistakes, Allah hates me, oh man, I screwed up, Allah hates me. Just keep going, man. Stay with Allah, repent and keep going. And the Shaykh, he mentions this beautiful poem, actually it was written by Imam Ibn Ta'ala, the writer of Al-Hikam, that said, وَلَا يَمْنَعْهُ ذَنْبٌ مِنْ رَجَائِ You know that the, the righteous, intelligent person is the one who does not allow his or her sin to take him or her from hope. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفَّارُ ذُنُوبِ Because Allah is the one who forgives all sins. So we see this Hikam has two meanings, right? It, it is, you know, for the one who has trusted in their deeds, they lose hope when they slip. So the sin consumes them and destroys them. For the one who does good, but allows that good to make them delusioned and intoxicated with themselves, what's called al-ujab, to 
be amazed at ourselves, right? يُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يُحْمَدُوا بِمَا لَمْ يَفْعَلُوا As mentioned in the Qur'an, they love to be praised for things even when they don't do it. Then both of those are a sign of subtle idolatry. Doesn't mean that those people are not Muslim. Stay away from that stuff. But that's a sign of like minor shirk. Because I've made my deeds the object of my worship, my hope, and my fear. As mentioned in Surah Nisa. So what we want to think about in the first hikam is if I'm doing good, alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, I just keep going, I stay upright. And if I'm sinning, I repent and I keep trying to get better day in and day out, incrementally. And if I slip, I don't let that slip destroy me. That's why the Prophet said, وَأَتْبِعِي سَيَّةِ بِالْحَسَنَةِ Follow a bad deed immediately with a good deed. تَمْحُوهَا Because it will wipe it out. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that takes us to the third important principle that we take from this first hikam is the meaning of listiqama, being upright. Some, we, we tend to frame listiqama as only for people that are doing good. You know what I mean? Like only people that are doing good can be like listiqama means to seek to stand, literally, to seek to be upright. But listiqama has two, two, two types. Listiqama of the salih, the uprightness of the righteous person, is to be consistent in that righteousness, to preserve that righteousness, and to attribute it to the blessings and fadl of Allah. The second is listiqama, the uprightness of the sinner. Somebody may say, how can a sinner be upright? Listen, man, people are complex. You know, I don't believe necessarily in false binaries, but people are really complex. And the righteous, the, 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 the uprightness of the sinner is that even though they're sinning, they keep coming back to Allah. They keep turning to Allah. As I mentioned earlier, the hadith of Sayyidina Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَأَتْبِعِي أَسَّيِّئَةِ hasana tamhuha, Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. And this hadith, found in Bukhari, which when we learn from our teachers, I'm going to tell you something so cool. When we read this hadith to the Mashaykh, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which is a hadith Qudsi, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says to the angels, look at this person, this servant of mine, who sinned and repents to me, I forgive them. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, the person will commit a sin again, adhnaba dhamban, they will make the sin again, the same sin. Then they will repent and Allah will say, look at my servant who again sinned and has turned back to me, I forgive him or her. When we learn this hadith from our teachers, they won't stop saying it. Look at my servant, 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 who sinned and repented, who sinned and repented, until the student will say to the shaykh, shaykh, like the, the wording stopped, because the shaykh wants to remind us that Allah's forgiveness doesn't stop. Allahu Akbar. It's like so cool, man. That's something we learn from our teachers. It's not something we can learn simply by reading books. So this first hikam, min alamat i'timad ala al-amal nuqsan raja inda wujud zalal has so many meanings, but we took a few. That is number one, for the person who allows their sin to have so much strength in their lives that it keeps them from having hope in Allah. Number two, for someone who does righteousness and allows it to keep them, keep them delu you know, make them delusional. It could also mean, number three, that a righteous person, their, their trust in Allah is not true. Their trust is in themselves or their deeds. So when the going gets difficult, because their faith was in something which is finite and unstable, their reaction will be unstable. So the sheikh is saying, listen, Good and evil are part of life. Try to stay away from evil, try to do good, but we're all going to have slip-ups and we're all going to have successes. In the face of successes, stay consistent, preserve them, and thank Allah. And avoid thinking it was you. In the face of sin, leave the sin, make tawbah, turn to Allah, and do your best to get better, and follow it up with obedience to Allah. So the first hikam, من علامات اعتماد على العمل نقصان رجاء 
عند وجود الزلل من علامات اعتماد على العمل نقصان الرجاء عند وجود الزلل بارك الله فيكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله